Hello, Patrick. How are things? Good, good. Very good. Uh, from what I gather, uh, it's an exceptionally busy year for you, uh, organizing the ESSERC and being the TPC chair. Despite being a well-known figure within the RFIC community, uh, some of our audience may not know you. Uh, could you please uh, tell us about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Patrick Reinhardt. Uh, I got my PhD on RF power amplifiers back in uh, 2006 from the University of Leuven in Belgium. Then I went to UC Berkeley to work on uh, 60 gigahertz circuits. And then since 2007, I'm back at the University of Leuven in Belgium, working on all kinds of high frequency RF circuits, uh, basically ranging from one gigahertz to one terahertz in various technologies. Um, and a lot of this research has always been together with, uh, with the industry. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, what are the main challenges uh, faced by RF design engineers these days? And how does this training course address these challenges? Uh, obviously, there are multiple challenges, I think, because chips have become so pretty complicated. Also, RF chips have become pretty complicated. Um, I think the first challenge, obviously, is understanding your circuits. That's a big one. But then especially if you, took, if you look at RF circuits, where everything is highly integrated. So you have all these different bias lines, ground lines, uh, power supply lines, everything is on a single chip. The electromagnetics become pretty complicated. And um, what we have seen is that electromagnetics is pretty much a rabbit hole on itself. And you can easily lose yourself in uh, understanding all these electromagnetics and, electro and Maxwell's equations. But on the other hand, uh, you want to make sure you grasp the fundamentals of it so that you can apply it, uh, especially to make circuits much more robust, to make sure that circuits are much more predictable. And I think that a big challenge for RF designers is that you need to be good at circuit level, but you also need to be good at the electromagnetics and you need to be able to combine them both. Indeed. Uh, you mentioned robust circuits. Um, what, how important is layout? to achieve uh, first time right silicon. Yeah, well, you could wonder why why is there no such thing as first time right silicon? And obviously there can be a, a design flaw and, and uh, an error in the tooling and so on. That's, that's, that's definitely out there. But very often what I noticed is that circuits are not functional as we, or as the design team has hoped for, because there is always something unexpected. And the unexpected thing is, especially in engineering, we try to simplify things. We try to work with models. Um, and then knowing what is the val validity range of the model, when is the model, uh, the model valid and when is it not valid, I think that's very, very important. And this is typically the things that you don't read in, in handbooks. Um, of course, you don't read it in a typical handbook because you have to start with the basics. But as you build more and more complex systems, simple things like knowing how the RF currents are flowing, knowing how the fields might couple between different structures, knowing how in a differential circuit you might also have a common mode oscillation and so on. All these nitty gritty details can become or are becoming very important uh, towards robust circuits and towards ensuring that you have a first time right silicon. Okay. Uh, is the course uh, covering RF or millimeter wave? Um, I would I would say a little bit of both, um, or a lot of both, I should say. Uh, of course, we as a university we are we looked a lot into millimeter wave circuits, uh, twenty eight gigahertz, sixty gigahertz, seventy seven gigahertz, one forty gigahertz. We even made circuits all the way up to one terahertz. Um, and you could wonder, is it then also covering RF? Well, actually, what I noticed in my team is that by by designing these very high frequency circuits, our RF circuits became better. They became more robust. The fact that we managed the tools down to or up to very high frequencies and that we have all these details uh, that we had to take care of, it just made the circuits, power amplifiers, for example, at RF frequencies, they are facing very similar to pro problems as making oscillators at one terahertz. Of course, the frequencies are different, sure, uh, and, and and another thing that I typically try to cover uh, in, in a lecture or in courses like this one is um, the, the, the basics are the same, the fundamentals are the same, Maxwell's equations are the same, they don't care about RF or millimeter wave, but the solutions that we develop, and especially the best solution or the most robust solution, mm -hmm. that is very often different in RF than in millimeter wave. And 
what I'm tackling in this course is why is it different and which solution is best for a specific frequency range. So to sh the short answer is it's a little bit of both. In your opinion, who would benefit uh, the most from participating in this course? Well, my experience uh, from, because I've, I've given similar courses before, um, but my experience is that, and, and I also try to tailor the course content in that direction. So it's, um, of course, if you're new to the field of RF, you're going to love this course because I'm, I'm covering everything that you don't read in a textbook, basically, or I'm adding an additional layer of what you can find back in a textbook. Um, but I also noticed that even experienced designers, which might be very busy with the daily operations in, in a company, mm -hmm. um, they enjoy taking some time back from their daily occupation and, and, and they enjoy the, the insights that I, that I try to offer. Because in these courses, I, I try to avoid math as much as possible. Um, I try to avoid that we have boring theory. I try to stimulate understanding and I try to mm -hmm. explain with very simple examples and very simple calculations why are things done in a specific way and which solutions are better than other solutions. So in that sense, I think this course is interesting both for people that are completely new in the field of RF and at the same time also people that uh, have some experience in RF design but really want to either freshen up their knowledge or revisit the knowledge with uh, additional insights. Excellent. Uh, well, Patrick, uh, thank you so much for your time. And we are looking forward to your course in January. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I love teaching. Uh, teaching for me also gives me lots of pleasure and enjoyment in my, in my work. So uh, I'm definitely also looking forward to interact with the, the students. That's great. Thank you.